Let me show you how to use the T2. First, registering patients and running scanning software. Second, the T2 software user interface. Third, how to use the T2 equipment. We'll be looking at using the T2, focusing on these three areas. First, we will cover registering patients and running the T2 scanning software. There are two ways to register a patient and run the T2 scanning software. You may register a patient with one click and launch one too. Then run the T2 scanning software. Also, you can register a patient with one two and run the T2 scanning software. First, we will start by registering a patient with one click. Let's run one click. Select the patient to be scanned. Click the image button to perform scanning. Pressing the image button will launch 1-2, and you can see the exact patient information you selected in the one click appear on 1-2, as well. The other way is by registering a patient with 1-2. Let's run 1-2. Click new patient, and enter patient information. Enter the patient's name followed by chart number, date of birth, and gender. Then, click the save button. Now, the patient has been registered. Now, let's take a look at how to run the T2 scanning software. Let's learn how to run the T2 scanning software. Click the 1 to acquisition module. You can select between CD, Panorama, and Cephalo in the upper left corner. Press the scan button or double click the center of the screen. Let's call the CT scanning software. Select CT in the acquisition module and click the capture button. The scanning program will launch to allow you to select the CT mode. Let's run the Panorama software. Select Panorama in scan mode and click the scan button. The scanning program will then launch to allow you to select the Panorama mode. Let's run the Cephalo scanning software. Select Cephalo in scan mode and click the scan button. The scanning program will launch, allowing you to select the cephalos mode. The second part we're going to look at is the T2 scanning software user interface. The scanning program's user interface has four main areas. From the left-hand side, we can see the patient information, scanning progress, scanning mode, and scan settings. Patient information is displayed in the order of chart number, name, date of birth, etc. By clicking Recent Data on the top, you can retrieve and save the data of the 10 patients who were most recently skimmed. After checking the patient information, select the patient you would like to load by clicking the Load button below. The previous data can be retrieved without scanning again. You can see current status of scanning on the top bar. The center of the screen displays how the image changes as the scanning progress. The Scan Settings Details button is located on the far right. You can see it from the previously selected scanning mode, and the patient type is automatically selected based on the patient information from 1-2. If you want to fine-tune according to the size of the patient's head, click the OR button to manually adjust KV and MA. Offer six different scanning modes depending on your choice of CD, Panorama, or Cephalo. If CT scan is selected, you have the option to turn MAR on off. And with panorama scan, the position alignment function becomes available. This function is activated after a panorama scan. You can see how the generator temperature changes based on the number of consecutive scans of the equipment. When you finalize the scanning mode by clicking the confirm button, DAP radiation dose will be displayed in the form of a number. The third thing I'd like to explain is using the T2 equipment. Turn on the switch located on the back of the equipment. A white light illuminates when the equipment is in normal operation status. If the status indicator is illuminated red, turn the emergency switch on the back of the equipment clockwise to turn it off. You can adjust the height using the up-down switch on the side of the equipment. To position the patient for scanning, press the equipment control box button and check whether the equipment works properly. Column Position Control button. 
using the column position control button, you can adjust the position to the height of the patient. During a panorama scan, adjust the flank fort laser to the baseline under the eyes. Then, raise or lower the patient's face using the column button. Frank port beam button. Adjust the position of the beam to the flank fort line, which is the baseline for the patient scanning. This is mainly used for panorama and cephalo positioning. Canine beam button. The beam button adjusts the position of the canines, which is the starting point of a panorama scan. Press the button to place it on the canine. Temple support button. This fixates the patient's head to prevent it from moving during the scan. Pressing this button during the panorama or CT scan enables fixation, and pressing it once more releases it. OK button. Once the patient is properly positioned, press the OK button. The button gets the equipment ready for scanning right before you press the inspect button. That brings us to the end of the instructions on the T2. Let me walk you through how to run a CT scan using the T2. First, we will be talking about the CT scan user interface. Then how to run a CT scan. First, let's look at the CT scan user interface. There are six different CT FOVs ranging from 5x5 to 15x15 to choose from. The 15x9 size is set by default, and it runs full arch scanning. If the scan focuses on areas like sinus and TMJ, adjust the scanning position in the center of the screen. If the patient has a small sized head, use the 12x9 size to reduce the amount of radiation exposure to the patient accordingly. You can take a small size scan using 5x5 to get a clear image. If you select the teeth location in the menu where the upper and lower jaws are separated, a clear image of localized areas can be acquired. The 8x9 scan divides the oral cavity into different parts, allowing you to choose between center, left, and right areas for scanning. Since the scan covers the upper or lower jaw of the required area, instead of the full arch, it is suitable for patients who are sensitive to radiation. 10x9 scan mode can be used only for a TMJ scan. You can scan a part of the left or right side, or scan both sides simultaneously. For a both side TMJ scan, you can do a two rotation scan to match the right and left sides for comparative diagnosis. You can use 15x15 scan for larger areas. The gantry rotates twice to scan from the lower jaw to the orbit, which is useful for a wide range of diagnosis activities. The radiation exposure is twice as high as that of 15x9. If the MAR function is selected and the number of prostheses in the patient is large, this will reduce metal artifacts and facilitate diagnosis with a high-quality image. Second, let's see how to run a CT scan. Before running the CT scan, mount the chin rest and bite. Have the patient wear the apron to reduce their radiation exposure. Remove any metal accessories from the patient and place them on the cradle. Let's look at the options for CT scan and scanning position. For A15X9 scan, three different levels are available. Full arch scan covers from the lower chin to the inferior border of the maxillary sinus. Adjust the level of the chin rest to the patient's height. Have the patient stand straight with their feet in a comfortable position. Have the patient hold the handles under the chin rest. Have the patient rest his her chin and bite the bite block groove. Align the patient's face with the center beam, lift the face slightly and fixate the head to start scanning. An occlusion scan is able to cover a greater area of the maxillary sinus than a full arch scan, since the equipment provides the height set for scan. Align the patient face with the center beam to fixate the head to start scanning. Sinus TMJ scans are used to view the maxillary sinus and the TMJ, since the equipment provides the set level for scanning. Align the patient's face with the center beam and fixate the head to start scanning. With 5x5, you can separate the maxilla and the mandible, and choose one of the five points for scanning. Since the equipment provides the set level for scanning. 
align the patient's face with the center beam, and fixate the head to start scanning. Fine tuning of the teeth position is not provided by the T2. For an 8x9 scan, you can choose one of three areas from the maxillary and the mandible for scanning. Since the equipment provides the set level for scanning, align the patient's face with the center beam and fixate the head to start scanning. 10x9 scan is used for TMJ scan only. You can select either right TMJ or left TMJ for scanning, or scan both TMJs at once. Replace the chin rest with the one that is only used for TMJ. Adjust the height with the column up down button so that the chin rest reaches the level of the patient's philtrum. Have the patient's philtrum touch the chin rest. Keep the center beam to the center of the patient's face, then fixate the head to start scanning. For the 15x15 scanning, the equipment rotates twice. Since the equipment rotates twice and the position of the handle moves, the patient will need to hear an explanation before scanning. Have the patient rest his her chin and bite the bite block groove. Align the patient's face with the center beam, then fixate the head to start scanning. Gantry complete the scanning process by ensuring that the patient remains still when the equipment moves after the first rotation of scan. This is the end of the instructions on CT scanning with the T2. Let's take a look at how to run a panorama scan using the T2. First, we'll be looking at the panorama scan user interface, then how to run a panorama scan. First, let's look at the panorama scan user interface. The panorama scanning mode of the T2 supports six types of scanning. Normal scan allows the most basic panorama scan. It makes it easy to assess the overall condition of the patient's jawbone and teeth. Sinus scan can be used to check the shape of the maxillary sinus or check it for cysts or foreign bodies. TMJ scan makes it easy to observe osseous changes of the condylar, head, and mandibular asymmetry. The scanning runs twice, once with mouth open and once with mouth closed. A comparative diagnosis can then be performed with the two images. During the panorama scan you can run a partial scan to prevent unrelated areas from being scanned. You may select the right, front, left, or center area for scanning to reduce the patient's radiation exposure. Second, let's see how to run a panorama scan. Mount the chin rest and bite to start panorama scan. Let's take a look at selecting the panorama scan, mode, and scanning position. Have the patient hold the handle and position the feet right below the guideline on the floor. Instruct the patient not to lean his her chest and belly towards the handle and make sure the patient stands straight. We need to make sure the patient rests his or her chin and bites the block groove properly. Align the patient's face with the center beam. Adjust the flank fort beam under the eyes and ensure that the end line of the beam stands on the ear canal. If the flank fort beam is not on the same line, press the column up down buttons to adjust. Place canine beam on the number 13 teeth. Press the temple support button to fixate the patient's head and then press the OK button to start scanning. Replace the chin rest with the one used only for sinus scans. Now, let's talk about the sinus scanning position. Adjust the level of the chin rest to the patient's height. Have the patient stand straight with their feet in a comfortable position. Instruct the patient to hold the handles under the chin rest. Have the patient's lips touch the chin rest and fixate the face. Align the patient's face with the center beam and ensure that the flank fort line is horizontal. Fixate the head to start scanning. Replace the chin rest with the one used only for TMJ scans. Let's take a look at the TMJ scanning position. Adjust the level of the chin rest to the patient's height. Have the patient stand straight, with their feet in a comfortable position. Instruct the patient to hold the handles under the chin rest. Have the patient's philtrum touch the chin rest and fixate the face. Align the patient's face with the center beam. Ensure that the flank fort line is horizontal. With the patient's head fixated and the mouth closed, start the first scan. Complete the first rotation of scanning with the mouth closed and have the patient step back from the equipment. When prompted to rescan TMJ, 
press yes. Position the patient in the same manner as before. Then, have the patient open his her mouth and start scanning one more time. This is the end of the instructions on panorama scanning with the T2. Let me show you how to run a cephalo scan using the T2. First, we'll be looking at the cephalo scan user interface and then how to run a cephalo scan. First, let's take a look at cephalo scan user interface. There are six scan types available in cephalo scan mode. A skull lateral scan is a major scan required to measure the head for alignment diagnosis. It helps observe any changes in the face. Cephalo scan is set to lateral scan by default. And if the posterior of the head is not sufficiently covered, due to a short exposure time a full lateral scan is recommended. Selecting full lateral ensures sufficient coverage of the posterior of the head for scanning. Skull PA, or AP scan, are selected depending on the direction of the patient's scan. AP is for the anterior to posterior direction, whereas PA is for the posterior to anterior direction. At dental clinics, posterior to anterior direction scanning is mostly used for patients with an asymmetrical face or for an alignment diagnosis. Carpus scans are used for checking growth plate. The second part is about how to run a cephalo scan. Let's take a look at the cephalo, skull, lateral scanning position. Adjust the height of the cephalo arm to the patient's ear level. Insert both of the ear rods into the patient's ears and fixate them. As the central beam is not available, make sure that the face is not tilted sideways. Place the forehead ruler at the patient's glabular. Ensure that the patient's profile is at a level with the flank fort line. You can control it by raising or lowering the head. Press the OK button. Instruct the patient to gently tighten their lips and start scanning. Now let's take a look at the cephalo PA. Scanning, position. Hold the ear rods and rotate them 90 degrees. Rotate them in the direction that allows the forehead ruler to face toward the sensor. Adjust the cephalo arm to the patient's ear level. Insert both the ear rods into their ears and fixate them. For PA position, flank fort line is not available. Make an imaginary line to position the patient's head properly. Let's take a look at the cephalo carpus scanning position. Place the carpus plate in contact with the forehead ruler. Turn the locking bolts clockwise on both sides and tighten them. Hold the ear rods and rotate them 90 degrees. Rotate them in the direction that allows the forehead ruler to face toward the sensor. When the carpus plate has been placed, put the patient's hand in the position shown on the plate. Ensure the wrist is covered for scanning. This brings us to the end of the instructions on how to run a cephalo scan with a T2. Thank you.